Mm-hmm. Or trying to be, but I'm not. Okay. Yeah, I hear you. You know, okay. You know how it goes. <laughs> so I don't ever get a vacation. That line gotta, between uh, working and vacation just it's blurred. You just uh, yeah. uh, it, it very much is. You guys all know it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. For sure. Lee, are you uh, are you off this week or are you working? I'm working. Oh, goody. I never get off. Mm. <laughs> well, okay. Uh-huh. I hear you. Yeah, like, My husband's on vacation, but I'm not. Mm-hmm. Is he around or is he out of town? He's around. He's he's working on our house, which is not much of a vacation. Okay. <laughs> All right. You might want to try turning it the other way. Try it horizontally, Lee. Brandy, the same with you. Okay. We make it stationary so that we can, yeah. Yeah. And yeah, now right. we can see your box a little bit, but that's okay. Just putting it on a box. Now you, you can't. Now it's going back. And Randy, yours isn't flipping yeah. over, bub. No, it is. is that better? Oh, there he goes. I'll keep it like that. Randy's gonna have to because his won't flip. Okay. Okay. It's not turning. That's weird. Yeah, it's not yeah. turning. You must have a lock on. Yeah. Yeah, he's got it. All right. All right, let's, uh, we're recording for those of you who are just tuning into the video. The, uh, the video is on a redirect. You tuned into um, LouisvilleAnswers.com, so that should be good. All right. If we are all ready, let's rock and roll. We've got lots of stuff to go Do through. Do it live. Lee, by the way, before we roll, did, did you read that thing about the reverse contingency? Have you heard that? Uh, yes, I did. Okay. You got thoughts on it? Uh, <laughs> okay. Maybe when, we, when we tell the audience, I think it's just important. Some of them just to be as bland as possible, explaining what a contingency is. I hate that term reverse contingency. It's stupid. Yeah. It's, it's a contingency. Come up with it's just a contingency name. coming from the a, seller rather the than seller the buyer. Side. That's yeah, all. Right. Yeah. Yeah, it's not right. reverse. There's nothing reverse yeah. about it. Right. Well, there's reverse yeah. compared to no, that. there's no reverse. It's reverse if you want to call it that. Okay. That's standby. Contingency right. is a contingency. Contingency is a contingency. Quote Greg, the doomsayer. It's not doom. Oh, hold on. <laughs> Before we start, every time my email hits, I hear a ding. Okay. All right. Here we go. <clears throat> one, two, one, two, one, two. All right. Here we go, folks. Here in three, two, one. In three, two, one. News Radio 840 WHAS. Good Sunday morning, Bob Sekoler and the Louisville Real Estate Show here with you for the next 30 minutes or so. Another one of the COVID shows that we're doing each from either our home, our office, or in Randy Rocky from Swan Financial's case. Randy's coming up to us from his your your uh, your lake house, right? His extended yes, office. I sure am. No, you look good office. office. Yeah. yeah. Your extended <laughs> office, yeah. But you look good and uh, certainly everybody deserves a, a week off in your quarantining in place just to be safe which is a good thing to do yes Randy Rocky Swan Financial you can reach him anytime at 645-0736 he's a great guy he's refining just out of complete transparency he's refining a loan for me right now and he is about to close on a house that Greg is buying so we use him he's a, he's a busy guy there's a reason we use him so he's good he works well also here well thank you you bet. Lee Harris. Lee is with Limestone. She's legal counsel, and uh, Limestone does great uh, closings. They do a lot of them, and they keep things moving, and we certainly appreciate everything that they do for us. In full transparency there, uh, the, my old home that the buyers chose, not us, closed not us. on, closed at uh, Lee's office there, mm-hmm. which awesome. we because I was hungry, and I needed a cookie, and I knew I, knew <laughs> I was going to get one when I got there. So. Yeah. Bob's but, probably jealous about that. Yeah, no kidding. The, the great <laughs> cookies, by the way, Lee. You know that. 649-7964 is Lee's number. You heard the voice of my son, Greg Sekoler, does our marketing and photography and so much more. And you betcha. You can reach me anytime because we are desperately looking to list homes. We keep selling them, which is a good thing, but we need more homes to list and sell. And you can reach me anytime on my cell phone, 376-5483. And by the way, we've got two new online workshops via Zoom coming in uh, the month of August. On August 13th, just a couple of days away, from 7 to 8 p.m., we'll be reviewing for buyers how to repair their bad credit. By the way, Randy Rocky, we need you on that. How to get pre-approved for a loan and why. How to find the perfect home. What to do uh, in terms of needing a home inspector and a closing attorney. And how much do you need to really come up with in cash to buy your next home? And a lot more. 
So that's and more coming. full transparency. Yeah. Uh, no, no BS here because my, as Randy can tell you, my credit was shot when I moved back to, from New York about seven years ago. Yeah. Um, and he got me, we got with the, his team and over an 800 now. So, you know, good. Oh yeah. It's, there's a real, there's a real way to do it the right way. And, and, and Randy, I appreciate yep. it. Obviously. Everything. Okay. All right. Also, thank you, Greg. That's August 13th from seven to 8 PM. Send me an email and say buyer workshop in it. Bob at we sell Louisville.com. Also uh, on market calendars for sellers. We have another seller workshop coming August 20th. 7 to 8 p.m. We'll talk about pricing, best marketing plans, staging tips, creating competition, things like that, and more. Email me, uh, seller workshop in the subject line. Again, bob at wesellouisville.com. And my, my team, my radio team, all invited. We'll send out an official invite to all of you. You'll send me the email, and we will uh, send you the link to sign up uh, for um, using our Zoom system. So that's coming up. And if you want to see a rebroadcast of today's show, you can go to louisvilleanswers.com. That's louisvilleanswers.com. That's a redirect to our YouTube channel where this video of our show will be now. Something brand new. This may be a shock and a surprise to many agents in the Louisville area. It is big on the West Coast. We're seeing it being used in other parts of the country. You may be shocked as a buyer about this, as a seller. This is, I would say, the the thing you've been looking for before putting your home on the market. So what's the biggest thing, Greg, for most people who want to sell their home, what are they concerned about most? Finding a new home, right. which is darn near impossible right now, especially if you don't have a good agent. So Yeah. If you're working with an agent, it's part-time. There's a whole list of things. You're going to have a tough time. If you're trying to do this on your own, you're going to have a tough time. But okay, now we have something that we discussed about uh, on our, with our team uh, a week or so ago, we've talked about it in brief. I call it, for lack of a better word, a reverse contingency. Let me give you an example. We go now, we take you via radio to Western New York. The real estate market there is thriving, much like here in Louisville, Kentucky, and uh, early concerns that the coronavirus could force buyers to shy away from buying a home have been put away, at least for now. That could always change next week, right? The Buffalo Niagara Association of Realtors reports 547 closed sales in June. Um, the sales pending are up 14.3% there. Things pretty much the similar based on ratios here. In fact, I will tell you, as of midweek this past week, for the first time, I saw a number of homes on the market below 1,800. Did you folks know that? Did you hear about this? Yeah. yeah, we've, been, yeah. we've been tracking 18, 1850, maybe hit 1,900. But now we're below 1800 which means there's such a demand for buyers for pent-up buying. And anything that comes on the market that's priced right, good location, and in decent condition uh, should sell. But so here is the problem for most sellers I've talked to on a regular basis. How am I going to buy that next home if it's not out there and I have to sell my home first? So what happened in out west and up in western New York that's slowly coming on board is a reverse contingency. And I'm going to open this up as to, Bob likes to, as Bob likes to call it. You can call it whatever you want, Greg. I, well, let's well let's just step it back for the the, the audience because not everybody knows exactly what sure. a contingency is, right? And Lee, you back me up with the legal jargon. I'm going to be layman's here, but you know, a contingency is a, a, a set of agreement of terms that is saying that this contract is not going to be pushed through until these terms are met. This is the contingent, whether it be selling of the former home whether it be clearing a lien or something on title and whatever the case may be, a contingency financing, can, financing can, can encompass all of those things. So when Bob says reverse, what we're all just right, saying well, is generally, generally, yeah. generally it's been, it's used by the buyer is we're contingent upon the, the selling, sale. Let's just say the sale of our last home. And it's not often used as a tool by the seller. So that's where we get that terminology of reverse. reverse that's why. I, yeah, At that's least so why far so good on the legal jargon. Yes. Okay, you know, the, well, I could say the legal mumbo jumbo, but I won't I'm, I'm a mumbo jumbo sure. kind of guy. Yeah. I'm not necessarily okay. a cross so, T's, not a yeah. guy. All right, so now here's where this changes. So let's use the analogy that Greg used. Let's say you as a buyer are selling your home and you want to find a house to move into. So you put a contingent offer in on the house you like. That means you as the buyer have to close on your home before you're able to buy the new home and the release seller, the contingency yes you have to so release to the contingency and then the sellers accept that as a way of doing business now 
in this market, as hot as it is, probably not the most preferable thing to do in terms of absolutely putting an offer because there's usually a first right of refusal, right, Randy Rocky? Yes. Okay, thanks for that contribution. Okay, so we can <laughs> <laughs> so we move it forward, and um, here's where the switch is. So you, as the seller, now in the counter. Let's say you get an offer in your house for. Uh, $250,000. And let's say that's acceptable. Well, we counter that you will accept $250,000. And Lee, help me out here because this is going to be, a, I've got some language, but every, every attorney is going to be different. But here's the difference. You accept the $250,000, but the contract is contingent on you, the seller, finding a new home that you can buy within and insert the number there five days, 10 days, 15 days, the further out, the less likely the buyer of your home is going to accept it. Lee, am I on track here as a- You're on track, yes. Have Um, you seen that being used? You or Randy, have you seen that being used? Right now, I have not seen one yet, but it has been around for a long, long time. Mm -hmm. It's just that it was very, very rare. There was no need need for it. Yeah, And, 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 and a lot of people would tell me, you know, when, when a buyer would present that to them, you know, let's say 10 years ago, the agents would say, oh, you can't do that. And I'd say, well, sure they can. You know, they, they can put whatever contingency in they want. You mean um, when a seller yeah. presented it to the buyer? Right. Yeah. If a, a seller counter. put that in, you know, 10 years right. ago, the buyers would freak out and say, wait a minute. No, 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 no. You can't, you can't make it a contingent on you finding a home. Right. And of course they could, they always could, but it just was very rarely used. So now I think it's a great idea. I mean, yep. yeah. It, it, it's a seller's market. There's very little inventory. Um, they're going to have to find something too. So once that seller becomes a seller, then they become a buyer and they have to find something or they right. become home. Right. So yeah, I think it's a great idea. And as many of the homes that I go to, to talk to sellers, as mm-hmm. all of them have the same concern. Am I going to be able to find my next home? Yes. Right. Right. Mm-hmm. So, and yeah. Brandy, you haven't seen much of these coming in uh, on across your desk over at Swan, correct? This is something brand. New. I have seen zero, and yeah. it, this is very interesting. It really yeah. is, and and uh, because on the other side, as you know, on the buyer, and I think you agree, Bob and Greg. I, I don't even think very rarely if it's under three hundred thousand right now, are we even thinking about a contingency yep. putting it in there because you're not going to get the house. Right. Mm -hmm. Correct. I mean, do you all agree? Well, and to that token, that's why I think this is being used as a tool of leverage and and sellers may be thinking on the coastal cities where inventory is even tighter in certain pockets. Hey, we got a tool and they're they're not going to say no because they really want this house. So they're going to hang tight if they can, which creates a whole nother backlog of of uh, what we, you know, we like to call dominoes as as both of our our friends on the call know, because now you're creating them on both sides. Very um, possibly so, the sale. So. so we've been toying around with this, but this actually hit home this past week. And I'm trying to decide whether we, we I guess we should out of transparency, maybe talk a little bit about what happened. We have a seller who put the house on the market and we got an offer in that was 35,000 over list, Greg? Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. Yep. Now, wow. Mike, yeah, so 35,000 over list. What kind of price range? If you can, you disclose yeah, that. We, uh, this yeah, 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 yeah. I mean, it was it was in. We'll say within the three fifty to five range. Okay. And and we priced it um, competitively because we knew uh, location based. We knew the market. We know that the the sample size. We're going to get multiple offers. If we you mean three fifty to four, right? Is where I was just given yeah. a wider okay, range. Wider yeah, range. Sure. Okay. Wider range. Okay. Yeah. Sure. yeah. So four. the offer came in thirty five thousand, <laughs> and with another little stipulation that if the price uh, appraised for less than the accepted value, the buyer appraised for a, 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 well, you, you X amount of dollar. Yeah, yeah. Above, but above, and right. then they would pay the difference as long as it appraised for a let's certain say, value. Yeah. Let's say twenty five thousand over. But if it appraised for anything under twenty five thousand over, they weren't going to pay the difference. But right. if it was twenty five thousand a dollar, they would pay that difference up all the way to X. So it's more of a guarantee that we're willing to come up with some extra cash if it doesn't appraise for at least this amount uh, of money. And, gotcha. and Randy, this is where it gets even more crazy. Lee, you're going to love this as well. Greg, okay. told, 
Told well, them what they throwed it threw in as a side. We'll just say it's a very desirable bottle of uh, Kentucky's finest bourbon. A very very <laughs> desirable bottle. We'll say that wow. much. So, um, you know, it was all in all pretty pretty darn strong offer, and there was four offers on this home. Um, the first you know, day, we, right? Yeah. Yeah, we we set it up yeah. to where showings were uh, two days after we put a list, review all offers. But because we got so much attention, the seller said. Let's just go ahead and review offers, go best and final to everybody who's seen it. And now, um, now here's why our previous conversation is so important when it relates to this second part of this conversation. Greg, why were the buyers of this particular house so heavy in terms of offering a lot of money uh, on the house? They had just lost out down the street and they've lost out on, on many offers. Uh, in, in previous attempts. And yeah. if I'm not mistaken, had they not also signed, gotten a reverse contingency, sent it to the buyer so that they had the option to find a house yes. quickly. Yeah, on one, yeah. Mm -hmm. Right. Mm -hmm. So here's how this worked. Let me spell it out for you, then we're going to take a break. These buyers, we'll call them Bill and jo John Jane. We'll call them Bill and Jane. I'm making this up on the fly. Bill and Jane. Uh, accept an offer on their house and say it's contingent on us, Bill and Jane, finding our next house. The buyers of Bill and Jane's house said, okay, we'll play with that deal. We'll work with it because we can't find anything else and this works. And maybe they gave them 10 days. So Bill and Jane go out and start looking at homes. They Maybe they make a couple of offers and they lose. So they decide, okay, the next one that comes up that we like, we're going in strong and heavy and we're going to make sure we get it. To their credit, that's exactly what they did. So they went in and they got it at 35000 over our list on it. And now they can release the contingency of what they had, this reverse contingency on their house. So the buyers of their house move forward. Everybody wins and everyone's happy. And the but buyers- But just yeah, wait what? if, uh, in this case, we're fine. But what if something happened on that and and uh, they released the contingency well, and then they it could you know that it, happens in any, right any it's time. always a domino effect Be right mm -hmm. am i am i right lee it's just and more yeah. opportunity yeah you, you can always have your what ifs because there's always going to be some deal down the line where you know one of those people is not gonna get the money or you know it, they're whatever they're gonna lose their job or something's and there's gonna be an inspection issue but but as, as a general rule, I think right now, it, it's, a, it's a great idea for sellers. And yeah. Randy, the, the contract is still going to be contingent on financing. So if something home goes along the right. way, right? Yes, it will be. Thanks for contributing again. Yes, thanks life. for contributing. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I love Randy, and I can give him a little, little heat here. So yes, thanks for doing all that cont contribution to this thing. So, <laughs> and it, that happens in any deal. Now, for us, the good thing that we do is we're keeping record of the other offers that came in and they'll become, they could become primary offers if the first one falls away, maybe not at the 35,000 over. Yeah, and we're seeing not only that, not only are we keeping records, the buyers are check, the buyers agents are checking in on, on my old per personal home. It was, you know, we had a, we had a long um, period between acceptance and closing and we're closed. Yeah. But during that time frame, we had the other agents continuously reaching out and saying, hey, just making sure that you guys are still in line because that's how that's how insane demand is right now. All right. Well, so, and I, I've yeah. had I've had two conversations in the last two weeks about not doing a contingency, and one of them said I want to move in with my in-laws, and I go well, and they go I really don't want to do it. I go well, you can do a you know a month to month apartment or what have you, and they're like, man, this scares me to death. I go but but, but they don't have any other options. Uh, this this is very interesting conversation. It is, isn't it? It opens up a whole new world of things that could be mm -hmm. possibilities here. Now, mind you, folks, th understand that this is a new concept, but if more and more sellers adopt it, it can help everyone move along. And here's why. Because if you're in the one hundred to three hundred to three hundred fifty thousand dollar price range and you use this reverse contingency in your counter to the buyer, and you are moving up in size and price, the higher mm -hmm. priced homes above 350 are much slower and you may be able to get a good deal if you shop and find a couple and you've already got a contract on yours. You don't have to necessarily put a contingency offer on the one you're going to buy just on the closing of it because you already have an offer on yours. 
Am I speaking out of turn and anybody not mm, understanding? Because I know I'm going fast for a lot of the yeah. listeners who are, are listening. No, but buckle up, baby, because this is, this is how the industry is going to be for the next couple of years, in my opinion. It's going to so. change. So, again, folks, if you want more information, you can reach out to me. Uh, three seven six five four eight three on this reverse contingency. Well, right. and I, and and I yeah. think a lot of people are they they really are fearful a lot that I talk to because they don't know where they're going to go. Yeah, they don't know. It, it, yeah. So this is this is this is it's really interesting. I you like know? it. I like it a lot. I really I, do. Yep. I think it makes a lot of sense to my fellow realtors who might be listening right now to the show. Let me just say: any questions, concerns, thoughts. I would love to hear from you both on the air, in email, or call me, 376-5483. And I'll share what we have been able to put together with a couple of attorneys, including Lee Harris, as to how to structure the counter. That's what so it comes down to. So what is the to. maximum time amount? Well, we don't know. See, I, the longer you go out in terms of days, the less appealing it's going to be to the buyer. Yes. So gotcha. if, if you put 10 days, I think that'd be, so it gives you an additional 10 days to find the house. How and bad gets, do they want the house and how bad yeah. do you want yeah, it? Yes. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. It changes the playing field. So just mm -hmm. know this is something that we're pioneering. It's done in other areas. We think it could be strong here and work well. And let's, let's move it forward. All right. Whatever that noise is, there's a weird noise going on. Yeah. That's better. Somebody's, somebody's getting a message. Maybe. <laughs> All right, let's, whatever that is, let's stop that noise. All right. We're going to take a break. When we come back for summer home tasks, you may have forgotten to add to your to-do list for this month. Again, in the, in the studio, me, uh, I'm actually at my office studio, uh, but more importantly, Randy Rocky coming from his vacation location. I say that three times fast. Swan Financial. <laughs> and his number is 6450736. Lee Harris, Legal Counsel, Limestone Title and Escrow, 6497964. My son, Greg, who does a great job marketing uh, also our photography and so much more. And you can reach me anytime for anything we talk about and more at 376-5483. We will be right back in a moment on News Radio 840 WHAS. News Radio 840 WHAS, the Louisville Real Estate Show with you. Thank you, Barbara Corcoran. Actually, Barbara just posted on our Facebook page a couple of days ago. We thank you for your kind words. I'll push that out there as well. You can get in contact with me with regards to the guaranteed sale program or anything else. Uh, no extra fees. You can cancel at any time with the guaranteed sale program. And you can reach me, Bob Sekolder, at 376-5483. Here with us coming from her house, Lee Harris, Legal Counsel, Limestone Title and Escrow, at 649-7964. Also, Randy Rocky from his vacation location at Swan Financial, 6450736. And my son, Greg, who does a great job with our marketing and photography and so much more. And you can uh, reach him through me at 376-5483. Okay, let's see. Four summer home tasks that you may have forgotten to add to the list. So let's start with uh, take an opportunity right now to walk around your house outside. If it's a condo, do the same thing. Look for anything that might be unusual. You want to start doing some annual inspections, see if anything has popped up. Maybe there's gutters that are clogged. Um, walk around, see if there's paint peeling. This is the perfect time. You want to power wash maybe your driveway. By the way, you know what I did? I, I, well, Greg had borrowed my gas power washer. He returned it. And I bought, you know, the little thing that spins around and it's kind of a power wash thing that you go along your driveway. I had bought one a couple of years ago that I used with the electric power washer that I had. Not so good. So I just bought and just got it a couple of days ago. I'll use it uh, probably today. This larger power washer head. So basically, it skims along the driveway surface or patio surface or your deck, but you got to be careful because it could pull up the paint unless you want to repaint it. This is perfect. And it washes away and removes and, and uh, the grime gets off of the surface. So think about sprucing things up. Also, Check your landscaping tasks. It Make sure that the you're weeding, but also make sure that the plants, the flowers, your irrigation system is working properly if you have one. Um, things like sunflowers and lavender, they're growing right now at incredible paces. Mowing, weeding your grass will help you stay on top of sudden growth that takes place when the weather is has warmed up. Planting perennials, of course, um, gives you year after year after year of flowering. 
check your HVAC. Make sure you change your filter on a regular basis. You may want to bring in a uh, HVAC company that does a periodic, maybe twice a year inspection of the system to make sure it, it's running at its peak performance. Because let's face it, if that thing and the heat that we've been dealing with, if that thing falls apart, you're in big trouble. So a maintenance checkup may be worth it. And a lot of places are running specials. So I'd call around unless you have, uh, you've got somebody already who can give you a good deal. You might find that one's doing a better job than the others. So those are some of the big things. Again, change your air filters on a regular basis. Now, today's a perfect date since we're talking about it. Make sure your batteries, if you have a nine volt battery in your smoke detector, I know they say, you know, fall forward, spring back, whatever, spring forward, fall back, um, change then. But just, it's always good to do a good checkup on your, um, your nine volt batteries. Guys, are you cleaning surfaces when you're going, coming home from your uh, trips out with the COVID-19 out there? Are you both doing that? Yes. Okay. Absolutely. New study, yes. new study out. And uh, again, I, I'm cautious about where this is, where it's happening. Uh, two new, two disinfectants from Lysol uh, apparently do a good job in terms of killing um, these coronavirus. Is this the one? Is this the one we can? No, never mind. We won't. Okay. Maybe it's the one. Called, maybe it's the one we can. Is it, we can ingest this one? No, no. no? Sorry. Very <laughs> sorry. Lysol disinfectant spray and Lysol dis disinfectant mats cover mist. These products are distinct because of they've now been tested according to the EPA. Their anti-COVID virus. So again, I'll give the sounds up. like another brand to sell more stuff to me. That's possible. The, the, the and, pessimist. I'm gonna use my, to... <laughs> my 70 percent alcohol and yeah. good, you know. I was wondering non toxic if, stuff. I was wondering if this was this story was produced by Lysol since it's mentioning two Lysol products, but mm. two brand new Lysol products that yeah. are somehow the other ones don't yeah, no. the other ones yeah. that disinfect uh, disinfect the flu don't yeah. necessarily di <laughs> hey, gee, miss me with all that blah 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 blah. Yep. All right. It was the Meshuggah. Um, a couple of things. Again, if you want to see a replay of the show, LouisvilleAnswers.com. If you want to see what buyers and sellers are talking about us or saying about us, go to LouisvilleZillow.com. That's LouisvilleZillow.com. All right. Yeah, a thanks uh, and a, a nod to uh, Wave 3, who this past week did a story on the rental scam. Did you guys get a chance to see that? I sent that out as a link to some of you. So we're seeing this as a big problem. And I'm, I'm wondering in the wrap up time that we have Lee and Randy, maybe not so much Randy, but Lee, what we're seeing is there are these goobers around the country and possibly around the world who go on Zillow, realtor.com, even the multiple listing service, take pictures. Used to be Craigslist. Posted. Craigs, yeah. They, they used no, to I'm be. Saying. Craigslist they're, is, no, I'm saying it's the same thing. Yeah. Yeah. We've seen they're, this, we've they're seen this taking, happening for a long time. They're taking the pictures that we put up as agents, repurposing them on Craigslist, on Facebook Marketplace, a variety of places, trying to scam people out of money, um, asking for oh, $800 a month rent they want in advance before they send the key or even give an address. Lee, anything from your perspective of what can be done to prevent this from moving forward? I, I Call the attorney general. The police don't have the ability to do anything. These are national, international uh, people doing this. Wait, you you muted yourself, kiddo. Hang on, unmute yourself. Sorry. When Lee mutes herself, should I try to unmute you? <laughs> I'll try to unmute you. Well, say well, while we're trying to unmute, it's really yeah. just okay. there, you yeah. there you go. There she is. Yeah. I'm sorry. Yeah. Uh, good. Yeah, I would say I uh, know this might not be uh, as convenient, but I think I would say to people out there, if you're looking for an apartment or even a house to rent, whatever, you know. I wouldn't, I wouldn't be sending money to somebody I'd never seen or somebody I'd never, I'd meet them at the house. I'd want to know, you know, I'd, I'd look up on in Jefferson County, you can look up online who owns the house. Mm -hmm. If that's not the person you're talking to, don't send them anything, you know, verify, uh, you know, I, I'd, I'd want to see a person. I'd want to see, you know, I mean, it's, it's, it's to your benefit because yeah, if you give, if you have a thousand dollars for your down payment or your, yeah. you know, your security deposit, and and they take it you how are you going to get another apartment you know so it's really worth it to do a little bit more homework that people didn't use it's a shame but but it, but it happens know, 
Yeah, that's the internet. You yeah. Know, people. So some key things, never wire money to anybody. No. No. Nope. Especially they may tell you they moved out of the city, so you gotta wire nope, not gonna happen. Of mm -hmm. course, never wire any money or give any money or send any money before you've actually seen the house. And we're talking specifically here, Lee, about houses. But more importantly, if there's an address, go out and make sure the house is for rent. If there's a for sale sign in the front yard, call the agent's name on that sale, on that front side sign, and make sure it's actually for rent as well as for sale. Chances are you don't want to become a victim of a scam, which almost happened to a number of people this week, and we're seeing it happen more and more. Okay. Right. Yes. We are out of time. I know Randy didn't say a lot, but what he said was important. Brandy Rocky Swan Financial, interest rate still low, which is important as well, correct? Very low. And uh, please call me for any refinances or purchases. You can reach him uh, day or night, even when he's at the lake house at 645-0736. Thanks for being here, buddy. Lee Harris, Thank you, Legal Bob. Counsel, Limestone, 649-7964. Thank you, as always. Absolutely. Got a lot of information out today. My son, Greg, our marketing and photography, so much more. Thank you for being there, buddy. Thank you, sir. And you can reach me anytime, 376-5483. See you next Sunday on News Radio 840 WHAS. Okay. Sorry to give you a little way to there. You're just relaxed. So relaxed, Mr. Rocky. Oh, it's great. I, you know, I, I don't want to elaborate when there's nothing. I, I think that. No, you're good. I just don't like to talk. No, just you do. Talk. No, we got to, we got to, we got to get away. Is very interesting. It was we got to get away. We got to get into more conversations like reverse contingency that may take longer, but they're interesting and involves everybody and get away from these damn lists. I'm telling you. I know you hate me for it, but these lists, they're boring. And we talk about the same stuff. How many times can we talk about HVAC well, maintenance? No, no, but you can't do it to, anymore. Yeah, you're going to hate the next week, but you're going to want to <laughs> listen to it. Uh, 20, 23 things. Uh, in uh, your I'm house. already asleep. I'm yeah, already we're, asleep. We're, 23. We're, we're Give me two. Them down. Give me two. And that then are, make it uh, fun so wait, that everyone that can, are, that are can talk about it. Bugs and rodents. Uh, hey. <laughs> <laughs> Hopefully, ho let's. I just hope that Brad Lawler's on that one. That's no, he's not on that. One. No. <laughs> that save that. See, save that one for Brad. That may, see, that makes sense. No one. We're not talking about bugs here. Let's talk about. Let's talk about the nineteen percent unemployment rate, which is the no, real no, number no, no, versus this, the fourteen point seven percent. And this is this is the future that. of real estate and why things are going to shift like crazy. I should just create. We should just create a split what? show. A, real estate's gonna get crazy. You got so right. many things. You got I'm moratorium gonna, ending. You I'm going to switch it out. The most popular yeah. house styles in the United States. How about uh, that? Uh, well, that's, that actually is kind of a, a fascinating. Do you own one of the most popular house styles in the United States? Yeah, thing? but what do people want? To, what do people want to hear? Yeah, well, that's know. you. I don't that's know. a millennial. No, I f no, not millennial. <laughs> I feel like what what is interesting in the market right now is something that we should talk about. I mean, the real estate market is insane right now. Why are we talking about popular house styles? Let's talk about what's going on. Just saying, just saying. There's lots okay. of stuff going on. All right, guys, thank you. Thank you. We'll see you next, uh, we, uh, I'll see Randy next week. Lee, I'll see you Absolutely. Monday, Monday, Monday for our 9 a.m. Uh -huh. You got the link, so you need to get me yeah, a yellow. I do. Okay. I do. All okay. right. Greg, Talk Thanks. to you. See you later, Greg. Bye. Take care. Bye. Bye. All right. Thanks, Bye. guys. Bye. Bye. Bye.